Geologic records are archives of our past. They date back millions of years and hold, among other things, information about climate change throughout Earth's history. Our oceans are home to a very important kind of climate archive, marine sediments. My name is Blanca Ocin and I'm a professor at Salamanca University in Spain. And I work in oceanography and paleoclimatology at the Group of Oceanic Geosciences. I'm interested in marine sediments because they are one of the best climate archives for climate changes through Earth's history. Marine sediments uh, deposit layer after layer, and each of these layers contains millions of particles and compounds that encapsulate climate information. In some settings, like continental margins, sedimentation rates are so high that we can reconstruct shorter climates in high resolution. Among those millions of particles, marine sediments contain foraminifera. These tiny amoeba-like organisms build carbonate shells. Keep in mind, it's their shells that are of key importance for paleoclimate reconstructions. Their shells and radiocarbon. But first, what kind of foraminifera are there? And what kind of information can be gathered from them? There are two types of foraminifera. Plantic and benthic. Plantic foraminifera live in the upper water column and then give us information on surface and subsurface uh, water masses. Benthic foraminifera live in association with the seafloor and then they give us information on bottom water masses. So, when we analyse the skeleton of foraminifera, we can access two elements that are important for climate reconstruction oxygen isotopes and radiocarbon. While the first holds information about changes in the climate, the second tells us when the organism lived. Like so. Each layer in the sediment where foraminifera are present can be assigned an age. Moreover, fossil foraminifera shells are extremely useful in paleoclimate research in several other ways. For example, their abundance is used to get an idea of the productivity of the water at a certain period. Or the species distribution in the fossil assemblage is very useful to get information on the characteristics of the water mass in which they live. And finally, the geochemical composition of the uh, foraminifera cells can give us a specific information on key variables for uh, climate changes like temperature or sea ice volume. Unfortunately, it gets more complicated. There are also other organisms living in the sediment. They can make a mess in the deposited material, a process called bioturbation. This is when the shells of the foraminifera come in handy. While some stay in place, others get moved around. To get an idea of the degree of disorder, it is useful to look at the radiocarbon concentration in the different foraminifera species. And finally, it gives us information on the radiocarbon signature of the water mass in which the organism lives. Sometimes it happens that different species that live in the very same water mass keep very different radiocarbon signature. When this happens, new questions arise. For example, did something happen to one of the species? And did this happen before they made it to the seafloor or afterwards? This is exactly what this case study focuses on, bioturbation and how this process impacts the chronostratigraphic control we have on paleoclimate reconstructions. <laughs>